Welcome to the Relationship Cycle with Jorge and Nelsa, where we discuss dating and other significant relationships. Great. Hello. Great evening. Yes, it is. Spring has sprung forward, it feels like. I know we're not quite there officially, but that time change and all these beautiful flowers make me feel like we are here. We have arrived. <laughs> I think we're on the right track. We're getting close. Now, if we could just get these relationships to spring forward. Um, you know, tonight we're talking about on again, off again, love. And I remember the Gap Band. They weren't the first group to record this song, but it's the version that I love the best. And they had a song called You Got Me Going in Circles. Round and round I go. <laughs> And I thought, oh, that's the perfect song for tonight's topic. So, Poppy, um, bring us on in this on again, off again, love. Have you done it? Have you been in that cycle? I have, and that was in high school. Okay. Not as a that grown was, man. That was the last time that I've played the on and off game. Okay, it's same, same. Not um, my thing. I am uh, either, you know, first, for obviously for something committed i'm all in right mm -hmm. like either mm -hmm. we doing this if we got issues concerns then we got to talk about it and we need to address it but this whole one day we're together the next day we're not to me that is a dangerous dangerous path and a dangerous way to go about building a foundation and a healthy relationship well talk about why you think it's a it's a dangerous uh a path. I know what I believe about it, but I'm really curious as from a male perspective, uh, why you feel that that's not, you know, a path you want to take. Because some people feel like, you know, as soon as the love high goes out, like you got to do something to bring the excitement back. And so they break up. So it's that, you know, I think sometimes people are chasing a high, a love high. So well, what's dangerous about this cycle? Well, some of this is, um, you know, some based on some personal experience. And obviously we've we've done a lot of digging and a lot of research uh, or research on different topics. And obviously they all correlate. They all kind of go hand in hand. But uh, a few things that really stood out at me just from what we already, um, you know, have to have researched and also just from thinking about it and breaking down this whole phenomenon. Um, number one, it's very detrimental for your health. And by mm -hmm. that, I mean mental and physical. Um, that would be bar none, my best point, um, because to me, health is wealth. And mm -hmm. if you are dating somebody or you keep going on and off on somebody that one day everything's, you know, sunshines and rainbows. And then the next day, I don't know if this person's going to be in my life or they're going to walk out that does a lot of harmful detrimental harm to someone's mental health and even their physical health, because then people start getting anxiety um, that starts harming you uh, as far as your sleep, your overall well-being, your confidence, because then you start to wonder, OK, well, what am I doing or why am I not good enough to just be in a committed relationship with this person that supposedly wants to be with me and cares for me? Right. Um, that would be number one, mm -hmm. um, something off the top of my head. And just from, you know, some of the research that I did on this topic, um, if your partner is a malicious person, they can use this as a way to control and manipulate you as well. Mm. All right. Uh, speak to that because, uh, you know, if both people are, you know, gaming, let's say, you know, I'm breaking up you know, this time, but then next time you're the one who breaks up because you feel like you got to get your lick in, uh, you know, you know, it's pretty balanced toxicity. <laughs> then where do you feel like the, the control and manipulation? Uh, well, look at it like this. I remember being a kid and my mom would tell me, if you don't clean your room or if you don't put up your toys, you're not getting ice cream today. Well, same mm -hmm. concept, right? If you have a relationship, right, where if you do something wrong or you don't do something to appease them or you don't change the way they want you to change, um, they can start using that as a method of, hey, if you don't do this, you know what I'm going to do or I might not be here tomorrow. And at that point, 
um, that's going to be tough to really create a good foundation and a healthy relationship. And let's be real. Um, all the successful relationships that I've seen, they don't do that on and off stuff. That is for the birds. The, you know, if somebody is genuinely fulfilled and happy, they don't do that on and off stuff constantly. That to me just doesn't make sense. Um, because obviously if somebody's constantly being with you and then not wanting to be with you, there are parts of you or the relationship or the situationship or whatever you want to call it that is not fitting well with what they seek and even with what you seek. And obviously you're forcing the issue. And when it comes to dating, intimacy, all that good stuff, forcing issues is never a, a good long-term plan. Right. Well, and you know, um, <laughs> I have seen some people do this game plan and, um, and one, you know, really in the, in the very worst case scenario, um, you know, there was abuse, um, there ended up being violence, um, to the point where, uh, one of the parties shot someone else who had, you know, gotten involved with the other uh, wow. mate and, you know, time had to be served, family broken up, you know, just, just a very chaotic end to a very toxic cycle of in and out, in and out, breaking up, you know, and when people do that, what, what I saw in that situation was why on earth, number one, would you get married? And number two, it just was like, oh no, no. Don't go any further down the road. But it was just like a train wreck. Everybody could see happening, but there was nothing anybody could do. It was almost like there was this intense, uh, you know, I guess love had to be at the at the base of it somewhere in, at some point in time. But then there was so much uh, ill will and dislike and anger like really truly one of the most toxic situations but it was characterized by that cycle of they broke up saw other people got back together you know broke up saw other people got back together it was insane like you said in the in the post the definition of insanity is doing something over and over again expecting different results and i was just like wow <laughs> I mean, we, I feel like that is, I mean, we need to make a t-shirt about that. <laughs> the definition of insanity. Do you know? <laughs> well, you know, uh, Casey Marie, I hope I say her name right. Um, she says, sometimes it's a trauma bond and it's time to recognize that the same person that broke you can never heal you. And you have to move on for the sake of real healing. And I thought that was such a huge point because a lot of times people don't want to talk about the only reason that we're with somebody is because of the junk that we've collected together. Not all good memories. Um, you know, we went through the death of, of our parents together or, you know, we both lost family members at the same time or we lost a child together or, you know, there are tragic circumstances that you know, we were both in drug rehab together or, you know, whatever, pick, pick your, your thing, but those tragic circumstances are the thing that keep us gravitating to each other, not because we're like, this is what I ask myself now after relationships. Like if, if I am at my healthiest self, would I still date that person? Oof, I like that. You know, at my healthiest would you be a choice in my, and, and I'm doing that now. Like I am, I'm really looking at myself first of all, because I think a part of these cycles have to do with you're looking for something in you, a hole in you that you want filled by someone else, but nobody else can do that. And that's why these things never work. Like nobody else can give you what you have to give yourself, not even your parents. If they're the they're the reason you got the hole in the first place. You know, we talked to Luce uh, Velez a couple, the last show. And it's just like, you can't, 
you can't look for other people to to make those things right. You have to take responsibility and do what you need to do for yourself. So if you were at your healthiest self, would you date that person? Would you be on this merry-go-round if you were healthy? If they were healthy, would they be doing this cycle with you back and forth? Oh, man, I like how you frame that. And I think that's a, a good way um, to basically kind of own up to accountability and own up to your shit, right? But the mm-hmm. thing is, if you're on the other end of the spectrum, right, if like, like you were saying that we've all have had friends, right, that kind of get caught up in those mm-hmm. cycles and those situations. And what I've learned is that when you get too deep, into trying to be you know a peacemaker or or mediator Mm -hmm. (laughs) to situations like that you'll invest you'll put in some effort and you'll try to you know look out for your friend or or family member or whatnot and then in the end you're the one that looks like the you know the idiot because you spend this time this energy you're trying to give a hand and then like a week later they're back together so then it's like wait a minute (laughs) like I thought we had a coming to Jesus moment where you said that you were going to try something different. Right. You were going to do this and that. And now, you know, I see you booed up, booed up again on your story with, you know, slappy that, you know, apparently uh, can't change and do this and that and the other. So from a friend perspective or family member, it can be tricky because at the end of the day, uh, you're the one that's going to look, you know, like the fool for trying to change something that doesn't want to change. Well, Catherine Madeline M. said, never go backwards. Always keep moving forward in your purpose. People go back thinking things might be different, but it's just a facade to get you back. And then they eventually fall back into the same patterns and routines. Take lessons learned from those relationships and move forward. God closes the door because he has a better one waiting for you to be open. I know personally that you can't step into your blessing until you let go of what's holding you back. It's fear of the unknown, scared to be alone that keeps people going back. But if they only knew, um, this was so good. If they only knew that when you break the chain, what God has in store for you is more than you ever desired for yourself. And then you finally realize why it didn't work out with anyone else. Build yourself up, love yourself first. And then someone comes along that shows you what you deserve You finally find or it finds you instead of same cake, different icing. You find yourself with a different kind of cake altogether. And it's amazing. Wow. That was really beautiful. It sounds like she's really had some experiences uh, that have been life changing. And uh, really, you know, I agree with that sentiment that sometimes, even though I did agree with Margot Payne as well, who said, um, you get one redo, two strikes, you're out. Three times, you <laughs> playing she around. <laughs> she ain't playing baseball. She's like, you get two. <laughs> oh, that's some one, good, good commentary. Two. <laughs> but yes, um, I, I would... did agree with that as well, Margo. But, um, you know, looking back, sometimes you do kind of turn into that pillar of salt. You know, like Lot's wife says, you just, you keep looking back and you get a crick in your neck. Um, and a lot of times... You know, things didn't work out for a reason, like she said. Now, however, I do have to throw the caveat in here. Uh, We did have Alexandria Renee Hall on our Facebook page um, that you posted. She says she dated for just under a year and went through major life issues. I guess she and her person and they broke up. They ran into each other four years later, initially not intending to get back together And now been together eight years with the now seven-year-old. Wouldn't change it for the world. So good for you, Alexandria. That does give us hope that, but, you know, maybe after going through those major life issues and doing some work, maybe we she didn't say this in here, but let's, you know, I'm going to take a huge assumption that, you know, the two of them might have, you know, matured, done some work on themselves, had some other experiences that let them see the light make some different changes in their lives before getting back together four years later. So oh, again, that was a little different too, from the, like you said, um, those stretches of time where you're breaking up every couple weeks and, you know, fighting and, you know, then you're back in love and you're chasing each other hard again, you know, so four years is a good long while to, you know, become different people. 
Oh, absolutely. And I think um, it is important to point out um, when we say on and off, um, we're not saying that you can't go back to somebody that you dated a while back and, you know, you can't, you know, rekindle that fire uh, or, you know, go back to that college or high school sweetheart or whatnot. We're not saying that more so the short term lapses, right, where because uh, I'm not going to say any names, but I have mm -hmm. had women who only reach out to me when they're on a break with, you know, the ex mm -hmm. and i'm like and i'm like okay let me guess you guys aren't together this week and to me what that does and i have also seen it from the male perspective right where they're not together with their girlfriend and that starts to decay the foundation of the relationship or dating dynamic because now think about it you're going to start wondering well what did you do in that week and a half that I wasn't present or what, you know, or who <laughs> were you spending time with <laughs> in that week and a half? Because what ends up happening, right? Something to take into account, right? With anyone, regardless of gender and whatnot, is that mm -hmm. when you start to get comfortable with this cycle, you start to encourage and enable inconsistent toxic behaviors and bad habits and patterns. Because think yeah. about it. Think about it. You're essentially allowing someone to get comfortable disrespecting you. You're right. Exactly. And you're, this is the problem I have. Not only you're allowing them to disrespect you, but I, it's hard for me to be in a relationship with somebody that I don't respect to treat that way. You know, like it's, it's hard for love to reside in a place where I feel so much disrespect for you that I can't stay consistent in our relationship from week to week. So, you know, if I'm the person that's doing all the breaking up, then obviously there is something going on inside me that recognizes I'm not truly happy with this situation. So like, I feel like I always said, I never wanted to waste another person's time as well as my own so I'm not going to play that game because I'm like, I'm not just going to wait until something better comes along and just keep, you know, back and forth and with somebody. Listen, like, um, <laughs> what's this Duval says? I'm not going to keep going back and forth with you. Um, that's just, that's a waste of all of our time and dignity. So, and we're grown ups at this point. A lot of us are, you know, late thirties, forties, fifties and beyond we are not in our teens and twenties out here just lollygagging around. What are we doing? <laughs> That's just no. so stupid to me in, in so many ways. No, I agree. I think, um, and I think a lot of people really, um, you know, gave a lot of um, good feedback on like things to consider uh, how this plays out and what their personal experience was with that on and off stuff. And, um, I get it, right? Like, yeah, relationships are going to have ups and downs, peaks and valleys. But I think the focus here is that constant on and off. Like, once it's constantly yeah. happening, that's a trend. That's a pattern. So either you need to reassess, okay, is this a compatibility issue? Is this just personality issues? Or is this something where I want marriage and he wants dot, 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 open relationship? And obviously... Those are things that if you don't find common ground, if you don't have, if you're not on the same wavelength, you're going to have some long-term problems because there's just some things. And I think I had a back and forth with one of our listeners that chimed in where uh, I mentioned, right, that, yeah, if you're doing the on and off and breaking up and then the issues that are triggering that are because of compatibility or, you know, family values or just don't see eye to eye with, you know, big important things. I don't know if that's something that can be fixed. How do you fix somebody's values? <laughs> right. You don't. Because that's <laughs> part of their core. And that means you want to change them, which means you want a whole new person. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's the that's the cat and mouse game, right? Like I uh, think now let's let's change gears a little bit because I, I think we have given a lot of feedback on the the cons, right? Let mm -hmm. me ask you something. Is there any pros or any benefit to something like this? I think it's sexual. Uh, 
I think some of our listeners uh, have responded to that as well, that a lot of the pros are around the sexual relationship with the person. Um, number one, because some people say, you know, breakup sex is better or makeup sex, whichever. Um, for some people, they say, you know, that adds the spice, that cat and mouse game that people right. enjoy playing. Um, you know, for some people, you know, to create that, the game of like jealousy or being chased or whatever. For some people, they just like games. And so if that's what your game is and you acknowledge, I guess, somewhere in your mind or as a couple that that's your thing. And, you know, while I might find that psychotic, if you all are agreed that that's the rule that we're doing, uh, then, you know, go on, do your thing. But I think for, for a lot, I think it's around the, the physical intimacy piece, you know, like maybe that, that sort of kind of crazy behavior heightens the sexual tension in the, in the courtship, you know? No, I what agree. And I think a lot of people mention that, um, you know, the, the sexual tension and the sexual pleasure really, uh, can be a driving force as to why someone, um, you know, keeps going back and forth. Uh, so that I, I mean, we got to chalk that up as a pro, even though at what cost is what I would argue with people, right? Like, okay, the sex is amazing. Uh, you know, she, he or she feels great or, you know, they look great naked, you know, and blah, blah, blah. But at what cost is this coming for? Right. Um, I know, um, Several people have said, you know, an ex is an ex for a reason. But I think part of Emily Hazel's commentary, uh, she had some, some interesting things to say at the end of it. But the first half of it, she says 9.9 .9 times out of 10, the people in the on and off relationship aren't compatible or they have codependency issues. So, you know, I think that was a really valid point. Absolutely. That, you know, maybe we're just, you know, we're not comfortable um moving on you know maybe we're in a town that uh I, I knew a couple who had moved uh to North Carolina and they didn't know anybody else but you know their nucleus their nuclear family so it was them and their children and that was it and so you know if they had had any kind of real issues they didn't know anybody else so you know you kind of almost feel like after if if you've gotten somewhere out kind of ostracized and this is the person that you moved out there with or whatever, then maybe you're kind of forced to stick it out because of survival sake, you know, sake. Um, so there there's some issues maybe where it's like this is the only person I know out here. So I kind of got to stick close to them until I can get closer to home or find some more people I trust or whatever. No, I agree. And I think definitely with situations like that, there is an element of codependency and the balance is out of whack as it relates to that. Um, just to kind of add to the conversation, um, some pros that I think that, you know, could um, be sal you know, salvaged from this, uh, you know, difficult scenario. But the one thing that stood out is at least you know you can walk away from this person. <laughs> at least you know you uh, are able to walk away. <laughs> so like, you, are, you might now, walk right back, but you can't. Yeah, you may walk right back, but you you know you can take the walk on the on the breakup plank. Now well, you, you may really be back by you may be swimming back to that same island in a week or a day or whatever, but you at least you know that hey, I can pack my shit and leave. Now, I may be back tomorrow, but I can't right. do it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I might not have the strength to stay away, but I will leave your ass. Try me. But yeah, so that that is something that I would at least, uh, you know, try to highlight. Um, also, uh, I feel that it's an opportunity to get clarity and pinpoint some of the personal demons and traumas, right? That we were talking about as far as trauma bonding. Uh, I feel that experiences like this can at least try to help you identify, okay, why do I keep allowing this? Why is this like a vicious cycle that I keep getting myself into with all these people that I date, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Right. And especially like if that hallmarks a lot of your relationships, you are the common denominator. So you may want to check 
Like, why is it that I want to do this? Like, what is it about me that attracts this type of energy into my relationships? Like, do you need excitement? Do you need to feel the thrill of the, you know, the chase or the hunt or, you know, that makeup to breakup kind of thing? And what is that really, what's at the core of that? So I really would say, look at your, you know, chart your relationships and what's the, you know, what's, what's the common denominator there? Are you that person that that's always happening? You always got this makeup to break up energy. You you may want to see what's that about. Yeah, I think, um, I think you're definitely on the right track as far as trying to, you know, pinpoint, you know, okay, is this a pattern? Is this a one-off scenario? Or is this just something that, you know, I have a tendency to do because some people, you know, it's, sometimes it's hard to face a problem. You know, sometimes it's hard to to deal with that, especially without any, you know, familial support or any professional support, which I think that's another positive thing that could come out of this is maybe that, hey, you know what? I, I see that this is an issue that is getting out of hand or it becomes a constant problem with all my dating uh, relationships or, you know, dating dynamics. And maybe that's, a, you know, a way to kind of kickstart counseling and therapy to try to get to the root of these issues. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, you know, all of it, I think, points to something deeper always. I, um, you know, just doing enough of my own um, self introspection as I get closer and closer to 50 uh less than a month away with my countdown and it's just like wow looking back and seeing some of my patterns um really taking the time to kind of unearth like you know where those things what they came from um and how to I love Luz really just had such a beautiful um, metaphor when she was with us the last time about knots. What are those knots about that we've got in our lives? And, you know, how do we untangle them? How do we loosen them so that we can really live a richer, fuller, you know, more aligned and, and fulfilling life as opposed to just keep going around the same mountains over and over and over. So uh, if this is you and you're ready to, you know, make some, make some new, in rows, make some new patterns for yourself that are, you know, much more fulfilling. Um, you know, it's not, it's not too late. Like I think sometimes people go back to Jorge because they feel like, yeah, I've spent too much time with this person. Um, and it's too late for me to start with somebody new. Right. So oh, absolutely. Time is precious. Yeah. And let's be real too. And I think a few people called this out. Uh, it's convenient. Um, yeah. where think about it, right. Um, from a woman's perspective, right. Um, do you want to go out in these streets and try to see if you can find something that's, you know, worthwhile, or do you want to know what you know, or do you want to know what the debt, what is it? Is it like go with the devil yep. you already know kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I have to try a new devil if it's, if it's that, because my peace is so much more important to me at this time in life. Um, and really, truly, uh, I'm with our girl. Um, oh my gosh, what's her name? I just lost it in the sea of our uh, comments. And thank you all for commenting. Uh, but uh, the young lady who said, you know, it's all about getting to know yourself and, you know, take time to get to know you and don't be afraid to be alone for a season before getting in these streets if that's what your choices are. If it's the devil you know or some new devils, then uh, that sounds like you're in hell. So you need to just get yourself somewhere and sit down for a minute so that you can be shopping around in a new location. You know, it's all about location, location, location. So, you know, it might be that you just need, you need time. You need time to heal. You need time to like really think about what it is that you want. Because if you keep picking up the same person with a new name, different face, then you've got to change. Because you're going to keep doing the same stuff. And it's it's until you have a changed mind, changed heart, you're really not going to move forward like you want to. Yeah. And um, I think it's also important to, um, to, to also take into consideration, okay, why does this keep happening? Is this a financial uh, crisis thing? Is this a compatibility personality thing? Or is this that we just were 
we're seeing the world differently of how we want to live and approach things because there's certain things I think we've talked about it in previous shows, certain things you can work on, right? You, you can work on things. Hey, you know what? I want to be healthy. I want you to be healthy with me. You're my future. I want both of us to be healthy. Stuff like that. Sure. You, you can literally say, Hey, you know what? I want to be healthy tomorrow and let go of sodas or stop smoking or whatever. Those are, those are things that if you put your mind to it, you could really do. Right. But if somebody is six foot and you prefer six, five, well, <laughs> Right, that's a problem. (laughs) Without some Prince high heels or something, and he may not want to wear those. So, (laughs) yeah, or you know, hey, somebody wants a kid, but you're like, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure, and then you mess around and fall in love, but you still got that itch that you want that kid. Then something's got to (laughs) give. You got to deal breakers. You really have to know yourself and what you're really wanting. So that you can you can draw your line in the sand, you know, I just think, it, but that is a part of that you have to know you and what you want so that you don't get yourself into these places where, um, and you know, that's, that's easier said than done. Absolutely. I've been in some places where I, I shouldn't have been, um, loneliness gets you. Somebody else said that too. Loneliness will Catherine, uh, Catherine Madeline was the speaker I was thinking of but yeah loneliness will get you in some places financial crisis but you know what this is the part that I wish more of us would get to the root of be honest about the thing like don't call it love when it's convenience don't call it love when we're in financial arrangements don't call it love when we're in sexual fantasies like, you know what I'm saying? Call a spade a spade. Don't, oh, don't absolutely. Put on it. That That's just my personal preference about the thing. Like, you might not have so much of the breaking up and um, in and out if you would just be honest about what we're really doing. So that way, whatever it is can play itself out to completion or you can stay happily engaged in whatever the activity is if you're honest about what it is both of you oh i agree i think uh you eloquently put it um as far as you know keeping it 100 as the kids say um Mm -hmm. but um look at it like this right from the very beginning if somebody's already you know trying to be sneaky or trying to pull a fast one on you that's a bad sign that's a really bad sign like it's too early for this shit (laughs) like if you can't even keep it a buck you know, in the first few, you know, times that we're interacting with each other, that Mm. that doesn't project to a promising future. And I'm going to talk to the fellows here. Uh, To me, I I think that is good to be upfront, right, about where you're at and what you seek. And you have to be aware that your standards, your well-being, and your values matter more than to be with someone to compromise them. Exactly. If, if you feel that you're compromising any of those things, you really need to sit back and realize, okay, is this really what I'm willing to do? And I think it's important. And listen, let, let's be real, right? Me and Nelson can have this conversation right now because we're being analytical and we don't have no skin in the game, obviously. Mm -hmm. But once you're in love with someone, once you have strong feelings for someone, once you've had that energy exchange, it's easier said than done. But that's why up front, setting those boundaries, speaking on things that really bother you or that make you feel some kind of way, having some value, some, some values, right. Some standards that really protect your peace and tranquility and your well being. all those things will serve you well, Mm -hmm. but you have to establish them early because once you're in love and you got them feels yes, and you you start getting in the sheets and it's amazing. Oh man, it's going to be hard to fix those things. You're right. And honestly, if you can't do that in a relationship and that's a whole nother show, but to, to tie the bow up for myself and for the for those of you listening, if you can't do those things in the relationship you're in, then that's probably not the one you should be in, really. Like, if, if I can't talk to my partner, if we can't really, um, you know, be honest, if we if I can't trust that what I say to you 
you're taking it in and really caring about my feelings, caring about my boundaries. If I don't care about yours, then what are we doing anyway? Really? So. Yeah. And the thing is, is that right with, with any healthy relationship, you want to feel like it's a team, but if you're like, you know, battling each other or you're trying to one up each other or you're holding all those grudges and resentment, yes. that's never good for, for a romantic relationship or any kind of relationship, frankly. Yep. Oh, no, no. Oh, so uh, good stuff. We want to thank our listeners for your um, your continued support of our show. Please continue to go on to our YouTube um, channel, uh, The Relationship Cycle with Jorge and Nelsa. Uh, you can find it there. Please like, subscribe, comment. That does help our uh, show for us to continue to give you some great content as well. You can find it on Spotify and other podcast um, channels. And we also love to make sure we put it out on other social media uh, so that you can capture it wherever it's convenient for you. Um, we do appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for supporting us this uh, in our third season of the Relationship Cycle with Jorge and Nelson. It's always uh, just such an awesome blessing to say that. You know, most things don't last. Uh, a lot of good relationships don't last good to <laughs> <laughs> So I just wanted to be able to say that. Oh, no doubt. And thank everyone that support us, uh, friends, family, um, you know, acquaintances that have been supporting us, supporting us and rocking with us since the first episode. We thank you guys. And please, please, if you know of anyone that would be interested in listening to our podcast and benefit from it, please share our YouTube channel. Um, we're trying to expand, we're trying to grow, and we want to continue to have these amazing topics and chop it up and have you guys support the cause and trying to use our voice for good. But thanks everyone that support us and we will be back and we will talk to you guys later. In all the countries. <laughs> <laughs> Buenas noches, my good people. Thanks for joining us today on The Relationship Cycle with Jorge and Nelsa. Do you have show ideas? Email us at jorgeandnelsa at gmail.com. Follow us on Spotify or anchor.fm for more great shows.